Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we're bringing in Ben Vinegar. Ben, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing okay. Hey, Jason. I'm, I'm super excited to have you here. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. We're talking about something that, uh, that I think people maybe get a little squeamish about, which is why I'm so excited about it, because it doesn't have to be something that worries you. It can be something super fun. But before we talk about that, I want to talk about you. So, Ben... For folks who haven't heard about you before, uh, do you want to give us a little bit of a background? Uh, yeah, I'll keep it brief. Um, yeah, it's just a, a long 20 minute story. Hey, this is your um, show. If you want to monologue, you can. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, let's see, I, I got my career started maybe 15, 16 years ago in graphics driver development, pivoted into web, decided to become a JavaScript specialist. Uh, I worked for a company uh, called Discuss, which did uh, embedded comments on the web, still still around. Mm -hmm. um, and from a lot of things that I learned there, um, co-authored a book called Third Party JavaScript, which was published in Manning way back in 2013, uh, which is like a millennia ago in, um, <laughs> in web time. And um, in 2015, I joined a company uh, called Century. I was employee number four um, to really kind of... Um, um, you know, kickstart JavaScript error collection. Century is an error monitoring product. It's kind of, we're going to talk about here. Um, and also do some UI development. Cool. And today I'm, I'm um, one of our VPs of engineering. I manage a big team of people who are building the Century product, making it better, um, helping everybody, you know, collect errors, monitor the performance of their applications in production. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very cool. Okay. So, um, so Sentry is something that I feel like we see Sentry around. Like you're you're very good as a company at like sponsoring conferences and and being visible in the community. Um, but I think a lot of folks are are still kind of nervous about things like error collection. I, I think that when we we start thinking about that, you you the, there's a thing in the back of my brain that goes, oh yeah, that's a thing when you when you become a big company. And so if you don't feel like a big company, you think, well, maybe I don't have the resources to do that, right? And, and, and this is something that I think is really interesting about Sentry because Sentry's whole game is that it shouldn't be. Um, so can you talk a little bit about like, what is the, I guess the, the reason that Sentry came to be? Like what's the space that, that Sentry is filling? I mean, the origin of Sentry, a lot of people don't know that it's an open source project originally. The first commit was made in 2008. It was okay. actually called um, Django DB error log. It was a plugin for Django. Um, history, history time. So um, Django actually had a feature that whenever there was a crash, it could email you. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, I don't know if this exists today, but in 2008, <laughs> I'm told this, that it did. And users of Django, you know, were, were hit with this problem. You know, if you launched a site in production, people hit a bunch of errors, you would spam your own inbox. Mm -hmm. And so David Kramer, who is the, um, you know, the, the founder of Century, the open source project, and um, the company basically created Django DB error log as sort of like a really um, a simple way to sort of like aggregate similar errors so that you only okay. got emailed once for kind of like a distinct problem, right? Okay. So if 100 people go and hit the same crash, you know, you'd only get one in an email. If they went and hit some other page and hit a crash, you get a different email. So it kind of like, you know, made sense of these these errors that were happening in production. So that's that's the origin, and you know, from there, it's kind of taken off. Um, you know, went from being a plugin to its own standalone server. Mm -hmm. Went from just being for Django and Python to um, hey, PLO seven nine eight. Thank you for eight eight zero. Thank you for subscribing. Um, I love that. Usually, I'm the one who does that. I, oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Always want to do it. Okay, so. Um, Watch too much Twitch. Um, <laughs> you know, so, and then from there, you know, became sort of like a generic error reporting endpoint that, you know, whether you're doing Ruby, whether you're doing Node, whether you're doing browser JavaScript, mm -hmm. um, pretty much every platform today, uh, we ingest that. It's a, it's a dashboard UI, you know, helps you, you know, we still do the emailing, you still get emailed if something's wrong. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of went into story time to like the, the origin of the project and the company. Um, no, the, I, but I think that's interesting. So, so I mean, you know, the thing that I think is really interesting about this, right, is is like 
if we don't do this kind of error collection and, and getting notified if there are errors in production, then there's really no way to know when something is wrong outside of getting emailed by a customer or tagged on Twitter, right? And so mm -hmm. that, and, and like, I just had that happen recently where I, I launched a, a new episode and then I edited the URL and the, the tweet that was queued up to announce it didn't get edited. So I shot a 404 out into Twitter and then I started getting tweets about it. Like people were in my, my DMs saying, hey, your site's broken and I'm panicking, right? So um, if, if I had some kind of error threshold in there that had said, hey, you're getting 404s, uh, I could have fixed that immediately as opposed to waiting until the next time I check Twitter. Um, and also it's kind of embarrassing when like a bunch of people are all saying like, hey, your website's broken. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think that still a, a majority of the industry still relies on traditional kind of like, you know, support escalation of problems. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty slow. I mean, it, listen, Twitter, that's pretty fast, you know. Um, right, yeah. Short that's feedback one of the loops. Faster, <laughs> yeah, that's one of the faster feedback loops. So that's not so bad. But for many people who work at software companies, even small companies, you know, mm -hmm. um, email goes in, hits the support team. People are like, whoa, is this real or not? Um you know, they try and reproduce it. Hey, I can't reproduce it. Uh, you know, this never happened. Delete. You know, so many, so many things like that happen. Mm -hmm. um, and to just get informed right away um, with, you know, what Century provides you is some diagnostic tools. You can stack trace, give you um, breadcrumb trail of what happened. You know, just a lot of stuff that you might have to go shake down the user to just put yourself in their shoes and understand what they were doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, it just gets you there a lot faster. And that's actually a really good point. So when when I use something like Sentry, I'm not just getting a like, hey, you have an error. I'm getting this error happened and this is the operating system and browser that it happened in. And this is the line of code where it happened. And like you're sending me all of that information, right? I don't have to go back to my users or open up my browser and try to reproduce because I have all the information right in the in the reporting. Yeah, I mean, I certainly remind, remember working in a time when it was like, Hello, user. Can you open up developer tools? Can you take a screenshot of the console and send that to me, please? Yes, absolutely. Um, um, and I think that's still going on, right? Your, your comment about like a lot of people don't do this. I think that's real. Um, mm -hmm. You mentioned the conference circuit. Uh, one of the fun things about working for, uh, I guess what was previously a small company, or, um, is uh, I attended a lot of those conferences and I would mm -hmm. ask people all the time, you know, how do you... How do you get told when when something is wrong? And I'm always surprised that, yeah, for the majority of people it is, I get an email or even the telephone call. Mm. There's, there are people who are still getting, you know, of picking up the phone. Um, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's, so that, I, like, I'm pretty excited about this because, um, you know, I, I thought what we could do today that would be fun is we could walk through the process of, of instrumenting um, a real site, because I feel like that's what most people are going to be doing. They're going to be trying to introduce this into into code that already exists. You know, you're not most of the time we're not doing net net new. So um, I have a uh, I, I thought we could use just the the learn with Jason site, which um, you know it'll save me from further Twitter embarrassment when I break my own site, and and uh, then I'll I'll know about it from the robots instead of from people who are disappointed in me. And I'm going to just rely on the fact that the robots haven't achieved the ability to feel disappointment yet. To uh, spare my shame, uh, I think we have some marketing copy in there that probably <laughs> makes you feel bad. But yeah, <laughs> I, I, I look forward to Sentry shaming me in my inbox. <laughs> okay, so if if we're gonna do that, I'm gonna switch over into uh, into pair programming view here. Um, and before we get started, let's do a quick shout out to the sponsors. We have jordan doing live captioning with us today thank you so much jordan uh jordan's here from white coat captioning and that is to make this show as accessible as possible if you need the live captions they are available right on the homepage. page learnwithjason.dev uh we also have sponsors the sponsors make the live captioning possible we've got netlify fauna auth zero and hasura all kicking in to make this show more accessible to more people and that means a whole lot to me um so make sure you uh, you go check them out. And also, while you're checking things out, go follow Ben on Twitter. He uh, he's he's tweeting all sorts of things. I see this hot take. I enjoy that. Um, <laughs> I also immediately upon doing that went and looked at your website. I was like, oh, I got to see this this HTML page website. 
nice and clean. I liked it. Loaded fast. It's great. <laughs> Single files can be very fast. This yeah, is true. Yeah, this is here's the site. It's uh it's nice and quick. Go check it out. Go inspect the source. It's a it's one of the first websites I've seen in a long time where you can actually inspect the source and it's like intelligible. Um so that's kind of nice to look at. But uh anyways, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about Sentry. Um and so Sentry is here. I won't charge you the ad ad bucks. Thank um, you. So we can all go check out Sentry. Uh, if I want to get started with Sentry, so I'm gonna uh, just do this inside the the Learn with Jason site, right? So I have my code base here, and I'm on the main branch. Let me make sure I've pulled all the latest changes in case I change anything. Good. All right, we're good. So this is the production code. I have I have no um, no no real changes going on here, and I'm gonna check out a branch so that we can reference this. Uh, and we're going to call this feature add sentry. Okay, so now I've got a branch. I am on the sentry site and I'm I'm ready to rock and roll. What should I do first? Uh, you can try sentry for free. Uh, we give uh, we have a I think a pretty generous free plan that is like, you know, track so many errors, get informed via your inbox, don't you know, don't have to pay. Give it a shot. Okay, so let's do that and then Probably not going to use that securely generated password. Uh, let me pull this off screen so that I can get a different one. Uh, give me just one second to generate an actual password. Okay, yeah, I'll give you my fingerprint. Calm down. Okay, I agree to the terms of service. Let me pull this back over now that I'm done with that part. And I'm going to create my account. to do it there we go jason yes. read the terms of service ahead of this live I, stream. I did yeah i that's that was my my reading for last night okay so uh normally i would go through this onboarding but since you're here i'm going to use you as my onboarding so i'm going to skip oh, it no 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 <laughs> oh no what have i done did i did i hit, screw it hit up the back button okay yeah, here yeah, we go so i think listen i would use this onboarding okay all right um, i'm ready so yeah oh that's beautiful I see. Uh, also, you know, shout out to DJHEZP in the comments because he's responsible for some of these animations and I'm sure he's hanging out just to see you click that button. <laughs> well, I apologize, uh, DJHEZP, that I did not click your animations. I, uh, I, I feel... Oh, so we would need to add code. <laughs> okay, so I have a... Um, a th so Learn with Jason is actually using Preact. So should I use the, the React version or the JavaScript version? Preact is like mostly API compatible, right? That's it's, the... it's almost completely API compatible unless we're doing something. Let's uh, do it. Okay, let's give it a shot. Let's live dangerously. I'm ready. Okay, so I have these pieces. So let's do that. I'm going to drop this in. Uh, so we're installing the React package and the tracing package. So let me run that. And while we're doing that, let's read what happens next. So I'm going to import everything is Sentry, import integrations, and then, whoa, hold up. I don't have to do anything? Like, I this is, this is it? Yeah, I mean, you just kind of blast that code in, and stuff should happen. I'm not a wow. React expert, though. Let's see what happens. Okay. All right. So <laughs> that's kind of a, that's actually kind of incredible. Let's let's give this a shot. So I'm going over to my home page here. Um, where do things happen in here? I've got my let's close all this stuff up. I have my public folder, not that one. I have my source folder. Oh God, I've forgotten how everything works. Um, can I just say this is a this is a bold choice? Oh, go on. File, file paths on the right. I this is blowing my mind. I've never <laughs> seen this. So here's here's why. It's because I do this a lot, and I don't want my code to jump. I, <sighs> okay, show but I'll us tell the you, way. This I'll is tell incredible. you what I've done that I've I've now forgotten how to do. Uh, Tony, you're in chat. Where's the 
Where's my HTML file? Page wrapper. That's the one I'm looking for. Here we go. Okay, so this is uh, this is I. So I'm basically I'm using um, Toast, which is like a, a Next or a, a Gatsby kind of like static site generator. So I don't actually control the HTML file. So mm -hmm. I think what I have to do is I have to put it in here because this is the the like outer wrapper of everything that that gets included around. So, That's a good place. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give that a shot, and we'll see if it if it yells at me. So I'm gonna start here. I'm pulling in Sentry and integrations, and then down here, I'm pulling in. And so this is like generated for me off my my account. Hey, what plugin is doing that kind of um, um, file size calculation as you import? It's pretty cool. It is called Import Cost, I think. Import cost. It's a, this is a great, I, like, I really like this one. Um, yeah, it's awesome. It reminds me if I've made a huge mistake when I, when I like, if I get in here and I'm like, four megabytes, like, ooh, maybe de destructure that one. Mm -hmm. um, but so then here, I call this. And so this, this uh, I assume this is generated with like a, a public API key for me so yes. that it's, it's going to my site. Mm -hmm. Pulls in integrations and browser tracing. Uh, so this snippet, this snippet, there's some extra stuff here, right? You notice there was two packages. It's doing sort mm -hmm. of like our standard error monitoring. It's also bringing in performance monitoring. So um, that's kind of what those two bits are about. The tracing is kind of what we, you know, is the library that we use for sort of like creating a trace, like a performance trace of right. your code as it runs. Cool. Okay. So I've done this. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to go back and finish the tutorial. Um, trace sample rate, good. Any uncaught exceptions? Exceptions, so we can break it uh, once we we make sure this doesn't explode and all those things. Um, oh, waiting to receive the first event to continue. All right, so let me start this, and we will do npm run. I gotta actually, man, I haven't run this site in so long that I forgot what the command is. So one thing is if you're going to run this like on localhost, mm -hmm. if it's possible to either build it somewhere on the web or like put a tunnel in front, like NBrock in front, so that the um, the it can be reachable via the internet. Yeah, let's uh, do it. I'll just publish it. And we'll get a uh, pull request. And that way, uh, we'll have a, a URL. I'm, I'm building on Netlify, so it'll take like a minute or two for this to be live. Mm -hmm. uh, so then we can do PR create. And happy with that. We'll just skip a body because we know what's going on. We'll submit it. And let's open this thing up. OK, so here's, here's the code we've done so far, y'all. I have this sinking feeling this is going to be a really short episode. <laughs> Um, so just validating what we've done here. We updated the lock file, we added the packages, and we added about 10 lines of code, 15 lines of code. Um, that's really cool. So now I'm going to go back. I do want to make a comment. So it will certainly like work from localhost, but the experience will be a little bit better in if, if Sentry can actually reach your server because it will do things like if you're publishing source maps, which I believe you probably are, it will go and capture that um, oh, cool. to sort of augment the experience. Do I have no idea if I'm publishing source maps. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I, I definitely have the the curse of uh, I build everything myself, which means that everything is done poorly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so there is definitely a risk that this is not going to be the best example site. Um, I guess we'll find out. And also... I mean, it's also up to you, like, you know, source maps is if you wanted to publish all your source or not. Um, given the way that you you operate things with that pull request seems not unreasonable for you to publish them, right? Not everyone wants to. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it's definitely a, uh, a more of a I did whatever the default was. So if my if my site generator is configured to do source maps, that's what I'm doing. Um, I forgot I have Lighthouse audits on this. Okay, come on now. Here we go. How fast is it? Still pretty fast. I'm happy. Uh, good. Got it going, and now we should have a live site. So good deal. 
let's go take a look at this. All right, so I'm running. No, what don't you want? What? Oh no, this is a this is a toast thing, isn't it? I need to figure out why it doesn't want to import this. Okay, okay, okay. What you doing? So maybe I need to do known entry points. How about that? We try that. Maybe also the, the tracing one too, since there's two. Um, yeah. yeah, it was weird. It, it should have just found that. So I'm not sure why it didn't. Uh, I don't know. Is, is I don't think Chris is in the chat today. Chris Biscardi is the, the creator of Toast. And usually when I get myself into trouble with, with Toast. Talvs Dev says, "Make sure the post install does it." Oh, okay, that's a good that's a good call. Let's run the let's run the install and let's see what happens. Yeah, let's, let's just let's just run it locally since we don't even know if, if source maps are happening, and, and then we can okay see what yeah, happens. We can we can totally do that. So let's see what comes through. I get my Century React. Yeah. Okay. So it's it looks like it's working now, um, and since we're there, I'm gonna I'm gonna push this. Um, all right, oops. I'll make this the upstream so that we can do this fast. All right, and while we're uh, waiting for that to build, I will run it locally, which means I'm going to run uh, a build, and then I will serve it. <clears throat> what up, Chad? Oh, hi, Chris. How you doing? We were just talking about you. Uh, we're doing toast things today. I'm I'm putting putting uh, Sentry into a toast site, which I'm I'm kind of excited about. My, <laughs> my ears were ringing. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad that I have that effect still. I put it out into the universe, and the universe delivers. Okay, so we're building the site, and when it comes back, we should serve for us. There we go. All right, we're running locally. Now we've got our site, and it is doing the things that we want. Hooray! OK, so now that we've got all this going, uh, I need to break the site, right? Yeah. OK, let's break it. Should, should be easy for you. <laughs> I mean, clearly, it's, it's barely holding together as is. So <laughs> Uh, we'll put something in the header that breaks. Let's do. Uh, we'll we'll put a call to. Um, put a call to something fake in here, and then we'll rerun this. And this should all go faster this time. Thank you, chat. No, what'd you do? Are you yelling at me because I tried to do something that the linter caught? Come on. It's hard to generate an error in 2021. <laughs> really so I, what I recommend is this is, um, Doing something that like a you know lin oh uh, that a linter would not obviously find, which is, is which is more typical of what you would have in a production environment, right? So maybe like um, string, you know, string access of a of a property that doesn't exist on an object is a good example that of something that wouldn't be caught by a linter trivially. Okay. Um, Okay, so that should absolutely fail, and the linter shouldn't catch it. So let's let's try that one more time. These uh, these these computers are getting too smart for their own good. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it is great that <laughs> so, so many of these trivial problems are, you know, solved with tools. Um, I know back in maybe like 2013, 2014, I know people who use CoffeeScript just for the, the compiler, just to catch mm-hmm. errors um, because they maybe weren't familiar with um, ESLint or JSLint at the time. Yeah, and, and I think that's a lot of the reason why we're seeing people go in and do, um, you know, the uh, the TypeScript stuff now as well, is because that that compiler is so nice to work with. Um, so this should cause a failure. Yes, done. Mm-hmm. We have a failure, which means if I go back to Sentry, event was received. Haha, <laughs> take take me to my error. I like it. Okay, so now I have an error. No one likes a product. <laughs> I like this. I like, you know, I, one thing that I definitely do appreciate about Sentry is you have such a personality with the brand. Like I, I want to show really quickly before we go too deeply into this, I want to look at your blog because it's one that I, wait, how do I look at your blog? Is it like? Um, I think it's blog.sentry.io. Blog.sentry.io. The marketing page you've reached it. There. Okay. Yeah. Check this out. Like this is. This is super fun because you get these like nice branded everything in here. Everything feels like it's part of the same website. There's a, a lot of personality here. Um, just, you know, I, I know that that's not what we're talking about at all, but just like shout out to your your team for doing an excellent job of, of putting personality into something that could be so dry. Uh, I think it's great. It, it is like a cultural thing that goes back to the early days. Um, Chris Jennings is one of the company co-founders. Um, you know, the Century website in 2015, the marketing slogan was shit happens. And that was just written there. Mm-hmm. So I think it's been around for a long time, but, um, you know, Hey, shout out to Cameron, Hannah, Molly, Sammy. Oh God. I'm forgetting <laughs> folks. Um, yeah, they're great. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Drew, and thank you. Sorry, for the, Drew. Thank you for the bits. <laughs> thank you for, for everybody who's dropping boops. We're in we're in good shape here, y'all. I uh, I appreciate you all. Um, oh no, we're going. Are we level two on the hype train? Thank you, Rubber Duck Don. Um, I still don't. I mean, I think the only person I've ever seen complete a hype train is Cassidy, uh, Cassidy Williams, Cassidy on Twitter. Um, I think level five is the highest you can go. So you know, gotta gotta go for that high score, I guess. But anyways, let's let's keep talking about Sentry. So we've got this very charming um, air, tour. Do you want me to go through this or, or do you want to uh, it, give me the I mean, course? it takes like two seconds. So. Okay, let's do it. So resolve issues. So this is like if I'm like, yeah, I meant to do that. Or you've got a fix coming. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, ignore. Yeah, I don't care. Uh, identify your issues. So this, is this something that I edit? Um, it's, it's just like a, you know, almost like Jira IDs, like sort of generated. Oh, oh, I got it. Okay. So like any, any time an event happens that is this error, it'll, it'll resolve with this unique ID. Yeah. So you see, there's even like an event count and a user count there to the right. So. Oh my goodness. Thank you, you DJ know. Cheesy P for blowing it up in here. Uh, <laughs> I expect, I see Ben and I see Xander in the list of people who just got access to the boop emoji. I fully expect y'all to, uh, abuse this new power that you have. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much, and uh, I, I'm, I've been working on a catchphrase. What do you think, chat? Welcome to the Boop Crew. Hmm? Good? Bad? Huh? You tell me. All right, so uh, so we've got a unique ID for our error here, and mm-hmm. then annoy the right people. Oh, I love this so much. Uh, okay, so annoy the right people. That is beautiful, and, and we'll probably look at each of these individually a little bit here. Um, yeah. I think we're hitting we're hitting like a break point that is not super flattering. Maybe can we can we widen this window just a just a teensy bit? I'll do it. There we go. Oh, yeah. oh look at oh. all this stuff. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I have I have now widened the window, um, and so we've got tags over here. That's really fun. We've got uh, narrow down suspects. Oh, and this is this is like a stack trace. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, um, retrace your steps. Oh, wow. Okay. Breadcrumbs. Oh, man, I love this. Okay. 
So, so looking at this, then what we, what we've done is we've now provided something where like I, as a, a site builder can say if there are errors, like if this error goes wrong, I know that it should be, whoa, whoa, this is not what I thought. Okay. Talk me through what this is. Uh, this is some, this is, this is advanced mode. This is kind of like, okay. you know, if you're part of a big team yeah, and you've got maybe, a, you know, 50, hundred people using this, mm -hmm. you can sort of create, um, some routing capabilities, not, not on like GitHub code owners so that certain people are informed or suggested, you know, based on stack trace or URL or other things. So, you know, the right alerts are routed to the right people. Yeah. But it's kind of a power feature thing. That, I mean, it is really, really cool though. Like thinking, thinking through some of this stuff where, you know, you could have as a, a project grows, um, like the header, maybe the header is controlled by the design system team. And if mm -hmm. errors come out of header, I, as the, the site owner can't really do anything about it. So notifying me just means that I have to relay that. Um, but if I know that, if I know where the errors come from, we can auto route. That's, I love that. That's, that's really, really powerful stuff. And the fact that, so I could, and I could basically do like something like, um, source components, whatever. And then mm -hmm. that would go to, if I had a, a front end team. That's right. Oh, that's so cool. This is really, really cool. Okay. And then I get to see my errors. Meta, oh, this, these are errors within the errors. And this is about, uh, I mentioned this sort of like, it's, it's trying to find a source map. And that's because and there's a local, local host. Yeah, um, and then you know, then we have instructions. You can upload source maps directly to Sentry. You can you can you know expose Sentry directly to the source maps over HTTP mm -hmm. if you want. It's a bunch of things you can do there. Um, it did look like some of the trace looks pretty clean to me. Yeah, um, the, it's all ES module, so it ends up being pretty pretty clean in general. So it's um, certainly got something, um, but you you know you see like. Function Z, function C, function A, right? Certainly something that could benefit from source maps. Yeah. And and we can even see here like 41.9. So we can get down to 41.9 and, you know, I I know where it is. So I know what I'm looking for. But hey, look, line 41. Um, so if we actually get direct access to the source, and that's why I know it doesn't have it, we'll actually show the source code in line in that stack trace. So rather than just showing you. Um, OK, let's let's deploy this. And we can, we can keep going through some features. Um, So let's do that. Oh boy, Chris, more, more subs. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate that very much. Um, if this goes live, people can go and press that broken button as well. Oh yeah, let's totally do that. Let's, uh, we'll, we'll get everybody to the deploy preview here. Um, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm really glad that I turned down the, the notification sounds because it used to be that when this happened, we just had to sit and wait because it was so loud that nobody could hear us. <laughs> but this is uh, this is wonderful. But yes, welcome everybody. Remember, you have access to emotes now. You can uh, you can rain boops upon us. You can uh, you can stampede corgis across the screen. There are so many things you can do now that you are a member of the Boop Crew. Okay, um, so let's let's take a look. So this is building which means we can put this over here and take a look. Uh, we'll be able to see that follow progress up there. In the meantime, we can hang in here and this is kind of, so you auto tag things based on what we're using. So like we know we're in production, so I'm assuming I can set environment. If I set like node env to something else that would change this tag. Is that my assumption? I believe so. Okay. Um, something to that effect. <laughs> here we go with the stampede. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think for every platform, we try to grab as much auto valuable stuff as we can that's reasonable to ascertain. Mm. Um, and of course, you know, if you want to go deeper, there is sort of a, there's a whole API for you to augment um, the data yourself. Got right? it. Uh, you saw that breadcrumb trail. You can add your own breadcrumbs if you want. We add things like navigation events and, and sort of like, you know, baked in browser events. But if you, no specific things about your application, you can throw those in as well. For sure. So chat, if you want to contribute to our error stack, 
go to uh, this link, Deploy Preview 15, uh, make your browser small enough that you see the open nav button, and then click that thing and you'll get an error. Um, we can see the error happening in the browser here. Uh, wait, why are you doing that thing? Come on now. Oh, it's not, it must be like caching. So let me clear the cache and, and build again, and then we'll get uh, we'll get real errors. Because I think it's just being it's being frustrating. Because if it's working locally, it'll work here. It's all the same build process. We just got to make it actually do the thing it's supposed to do. So um, we can watch this to make sure that the build actually does what it wants. And if it doesn't, then we'll play with local and and we'll not stress about it because uh, it's not an issue with Sentry. It's an issue with me not knowing how Preact works. Um, so we're we're uh, keep pushing this down. And maybe the other piece, and this may have happened off screen, but if we've done this correctly, you should have also gotten an email, you know, with the stack trace embedded. Oh, letting you know. Um, Let's see. I didn't confirm my email yet, so I just confirmed my email. Let me see if I have a stack trace in here. I don't, it may not have sent it. Would it have sent if I didn't have my email confirmed yet? I was playing around with this last night and I think I experienced the same thing. So we're going to figure this out. <laughs> um, yeah, in a perfect world, yes. Um, and you can like, you can wire it up to Slack and a whole bunch of other cool things. But like the whole, the whole idea is that you land on that page, you know, you're informed about that page as it happens, right? Like that event was available pretty quick after you click the button. Right. So imagine getting an inbox or getting an email or Slack notification at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then you avoid the turnaround time from a user. And, and this email. is um, like the Slack notification. I assume that's just a, like a button I click. Right. So if I go in here, I can set up a, an alert, I would assume. You can go into um, you kind of have to set up the integration. So you go into settings there. Um, and you can kind of, we got a whole bunch of, you know, cool things you can link this up to, um, just a whole lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Very cool. Um, and so like if I pick Slack, for example, it's going to have me, uh, authenticate with my Slack instance, but then I would be able to get like a notification channel, like an error notification channel that would, uh, Yep. Like tag us if something is wrong, or we could configure it to page our support team or something or, or things yeah, like that. Yeah, there's, there's pager duty in here. Mm -hmm. um, you can have it go into an existing channel. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's really, I mean, this is, this is really handy. Like, and there's a ton of these too, which is, which is pretty awesome. Um, yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. So this is really slick. We'd be able to set it up with, with Slack and email and all those things. Um, and also like Datadog, I know is what, uh, like what the Netlify team uses, for example. So being able to feed that stuff directly back into Datadog would be handy for them. Um, so then if I come in here, you can see my errors. This built for real this time, I hope. Let's try it. No sentry errors. Okay, so let's try that. There we go. It broke. Errors. Okay, so let's try that. There oh, we go. It broke. Errors. Okay, so let's try that. What's happening? There oh, we go. It broke. Errors. Okay, so let's try that. Had the volume on in that tab, apparently. <laughs> Woof. <laughs> okay, that was fun. Um, but it did what we wanted, right? We got uh, we got our our. Um, it scared the hell out of me. <laughs> But now we've got errors, and so if anybody wants to go and try this and uh, and click that that button, you are going to be able to trigger some errors, and then we'll start to see those here, and probably I'll start getting emails, which is going to be really fun. Um, but in the meantime, yeah. So it depends in, if there we go. There they are. There you go. So it, it kind of like the grouping works. Basically, creates a signature of kind of the stack trace mm -hmm. and, but depending on how you build it and you deploy it, it might create sort of a whole new signature, right? Um, in the sense that if the build process is identical, it should be the same, but um, looks like this one. Well, it looks like somebody in the chat is, is, is testing too, because like somebody defined this to see what would happen. Mm. And, and so we get a different thing. So um, 
But this is really cool because, yeah, so now when we look in here, let me make this bigger again, uh, we don't get the, the errors. And so we should be able to see more about the code, right? Ah, there Beautiful. we go. Beautiful. Look at that. What a cool set. Like this is, I mean, that in and of itself is worth the price of the, the price of setting this up, right? Like that's such a handy thing to see that like, Hey, lots of people are getting an error. This is the code. Like go look at it. <laughs> um, and I assume that if this is hooked up to like my GitHub or something, it would theoretically be able to, to kind of point me right to that file. Um, yeah, we've got that too in a week. I think that's coming out. Oh, nice. Very cool. Um, took us a little while, but yeah, we have that too. So you can pop directly to GitHub. Um, uh, Sentry is, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in 2021 with Sentry. Um, we could even try this performance tab and see what happened there. You did actually install the tracing library. So there might be some other magic stuff in there. Um, okay, yeah. let's see. All right, okay. So we've got first- You have a very fast website, so. Thank you very these much. Are, these are pretty quick numbers. <laughs> um, um, if you, so you can tilt it through this way. If you scroll all the way down, So, um, and you can click, you know, that slash. This is probably yeah. the trickiest thing about a React app is that there is no sort of like default um, routing right. library, right? So if one wants to sort of like truly instrument this performance stuff, um, uh, we can spread people's IPs, but if we want to oh, yeah. truly instrument people's um, performance stuff, um, page you kind of need to know at the routing level like what your whatever url is um it's actually hard to figure that out of the box for preact or react so gotcha. we have some sort of like you know if you use react router you can install you know our century react router thing and then you'll um and there's some instructions that actually requires a little bit more instrumentation sure you can kind of get the proper urls but um click uh go go forward go back to that sort of like transaction page Okay. Basically what we'll give you, um, if you scroll down and we hit, um, this, so this is like, this is sort of supposed to be like a performance overview of your page of people who've been just sort of like hitting the website, um, shows you slowest and stuff. Again, you got like a super fast website. It's not super slow, but if you click one of those individual events, scroll up, uh, that table right there, where it says duration, Ooh, 12 seconds. So we also, um, if you, we kind of do a whole kind of like waterfall graph of, you know, what assets are being loaded, what is the browser being blocked on, um, you know, to help you understand, mm -hmm. um, to help you build performance page or like performance pages. And let's see, and this is on Android. So let's see, Firefox mobile over Wi-Fi. And so how do, what do we like thinking about this? Is this, um, you know, so this we, is a single event. This right. is like a one user's experience. And it's almost like if you can think about the network tab in Google Chrome or right. Firefox dev tools, this is trying to kind of recreate that. Yeah. Um, with the difference being again, it's kind of the same story. If you have a slow, if someone has a slow website, Hey, can you open up, you know, dev tools, open up that network tab, send me a screenshot. What if instead we just kind of captured that for you mm -hmm. optimistically um, or, or proactively, and then you can kind of look at the real user experience. Um, right. So it is a lot to just look at. It's a little different from an error, which is like, you know, we knew that we, you know, we knew that there was an error, right. here's a problem. Here's a stack trace. Performance is a little trickier, right? Like, is this a slow page? That's up to you, right? It's up to the mm -hmm. developer to decide if this is even anything that's actionable. But we um, can see like, so here, for example, I can see that this is blocked on mm -hmm. this resource being loaded. So, you know, could I preload this to get it into the browser faster? Could I preload, you know, all of these things so that they're already kind of ready because I know I'm going to need them on the page and yeah. then I can make a decision. Do I want to add a bunch of link, link rel preload? Um, yeah, this is interesting because 
is the is that a is that the production website or was that the deploy the sort of like deploy preview it's build? it's the deploy preview but they're effectively the same thing like there's there's not a lot of differences there maybe this is the sort of like letting everybody consume those modules directly mm -hmm. i would guess by the way why it looks like it's blocked is you've probably hit max parallel parallel downloads on the browser mm -hmm. yeah that could definitely be the case is it because it does look like just kind of hard stops and waits there Mm -hmm. And it doesn't seem like any good reason, other than, you know, other than it looks like a lot of parallel downloads, right? Yeah, um, I mean, <laughs> this is this is a pretty uh, pretty sizable chunk of of things all happening at once, right? Um, but and it, and now you get to you have this visibility, right? Um, before this was just an anonymous experience on the internet that you may or may not mm -hmm. have understood, and mm -hmm. um, you know the, the, the sort of other values there are to give you a more like holistic, high level view of what are the experiences, right? So for the most part, seventy nine percent of users are having a good experience, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it seems like there is some, you know, there's there's some one tenth that is maybe having a slow experience, right? Uh, and and figuring out like is that something that we can control? Um, mm -hmm. is, you know, that's, that kind of comes down to that really challenging, like, I don't know, sometimes you can't, um, it, it does look like there are decisions we could make, there are scripts we could remove, there are things we could take out of, out of the, the mix that would squash this down. So even somebody on a feature phone over 2G is going to get this super fast. Um, but yeah, you know, this is, this is the same vital stuff as Lighthouse. It's just the difference is that where I think Lighthouse is doing synthetic. Right, it's doing like a synthetic score. This is actually like real user scores. Yeah. Uh, so somebody asked a question that I also have, which is this: this user misery. Does this mean there's a lot of misery? Um, it's a very subjective score, <laughs> which is, and I think that we have, we use that number universally, whether you're doing like a backend API endpoint or a browser experience. So I don't know that it's fair. Okay. But I think it's very explicit there, right? It's like 10 out of 11 users waited more than a second for this full page. I got you. Yeah. So that, and that makes sense. Like, you know, we're, we, we are, it takes a second to load. Um, and, and it's also really hard to quantify this sort of stuff because like, when is the page actually loaded? Because it looks loaded now, but it's definitely not. And there's a bunch of stuff happening in the background that like needs to be refreshed and so on and so forth. Um, this but, is good product feedback, by the way, because we introduced that we introduced that user feedback or sorry that user misery score before we had web vitals in there. Mm. So, you know, when you have the vitals, which I think gives you a way clearer idea of what users are experiencing, uh, the user mi misery bit doesn't doesn't really hit the same way. So, that's more of an artifact of of the world before Century captured and reported on web vitals. For sure. Okay, so now if I go to fix this, what's what's my workflow for fixing this, right? Like, um, well, actually, maybe, maybe we should. Can I? I'm going to set up an integration. I'm going to integrate this with GitHub so that we could do. Let's do like a real. Uh, so, so I'm not even getting that. Like, that is something that's in the works that I think we're launching very, very soon. So. So, but will this let me open an issue? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You can do that. Absolutely. Okay. So, so let's go through like the triage process. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit. I'm going to configure Sentry and get it added to my site. We'll we'll just let it have, sure, this one. No, not that one. We need learn with Jason. Oh my god, I have so many orgs. Um, okay, here we go. So we'll do all repositories on learn with Jason. I can close this window now. All right. So I've I've now done this, and I want to add this as an issue to my GitHub. Um, so if I'm going to do that, it's located in a crazy place. It's there on the right side on the bottom. So like scroll down on the right, set up issue linking. There's like a, there's a call out there. Oh, perfect. Okay. So then I click this. Hmm. Yeah. It's like, what happens here? Add installation. Add installation. Didn't we have this? Oh, maybe it's, um, hmm. Close this window. Do... This is a good test, by the way. I'm sure we have like some C configurations there. Oh, okay. There's a big, you know, listen, I hope that some of our developers are watching this. Okay, uh, so I'm going to add a repository and I want this to be learn with json.dev. There we go. Okay. So then if I go back to my issues mm -hmm. and I click on this issue. Yeah. And I say I want to create an issue. <laughs> What's going to happen with Oh, no. Oh my goodness. Okay, let me let me refresh. I don't know. 
even I, even I don't actually know what the next step here is if, is if you've gone to that effort. Um, hmm. Okay. I might just bail out on this entirely. Okay. Yeah. So maybe, maybe, maybe we're not there yet. Hmm. Share. No. Um, oh, that's kind of cool though. I can share this and then I mm -hmm. can like send this to the chat and y'all can go look at a sentry error and kind of poke around in there. Um, there's a there's a question uh, there's a question from the team does Sentry use Sentry the answer is yes, um, of course we do. I wish that Sentry told us when uh, there were massive UI failings <laughs> uh, <laughs> during someone's onboarding experience, but alas, we're not there yet. Maybe next year. But that's okay. So we so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fix this bug. So I'm gonna go back in here and we're gonna fix the bug. I'm gonna save it and then let's get commit. Oh, so, so before you do that, okay. let's do one thing. Let's go back okay. to the UI. So there's this resolve button, right? Mm -hmm. um, why don't you just hit that? You're just going to say, hey, I fixed it. Okay. Because often what we do when we fix bugs is, yeah, I, I fixed that bug. <laughs> but did you really? <laughs> right? Okay. Because um, if you don't, you know, again, you, sh you, you, you go through this long cycle where you deploy it, you, you do one of these. Mm -hmm. You walk out the door, and then you get an email from support the next day that tells you, hey, actually, we didn't fix that problem. Right. Okay. So so let's pop back in to our deploy preview here, and let's trigger this bug again. Yeah. I mean, so if you just trigger that again, you know, Sentry will go, wait a minute. I've seen this before. This Thanks. isn't actually fixed, right? Um, Going back. It clears it from the list for now because, you know, it believes that you resolved it. Um, but should we just go and, and like, if we trigger that button in a perfect world, Sentry will go, Hey, wait a minute. This is a regression. Uh, yeah, let's, let's do it. So I'm refreshing the page. Here's our bug. Here's our bug. Oh no. I did the thing again. Here's our bug. Woof. Okay. All right. So now we've got now we've got our bug re-triggered. And wait, I think I cleared the wrong bug. So this I think is the one that's happening. Where was the most recent one? It should be any any second now. Yeah, so it probably depends, you know, because when they have different signatures, again, it's kind of like you know, because you had source maps applied to, to some of them and not others that created a different signature because now it can actually expand the method names and give you like a more clear stack right. trace. So that, that will give a different signature and we group on stack trace primarily. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna resolve all of these because uh, mm -hmm. I don't have. Yeah. So let's, let's resolve them all. And then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna trigger this. I'm gonna mute this tab so it stops doing that. And then I'm going to trigger our error. There's our error. Okay. So now that I've triggered it and I go back. Yes. Yeah, let's see what happens. It's back. It is back. Okay. And if you've got a confirmed email, you probably have something in your inbox that says, hey, actually, we've, we've determined that there's a regression. Again, perfect world here. Um, you verified your email, so hopefully this is working. Yep. Here we go. I have a regression. Yeah. There it so, is. So, you know, if you use Sentry and you kind of use it for the workflow, not just the reporting, it kind of has some like handy, helpful things. Mm -hmm. um, and that resolve button, by the way. So if you if you want to, you see that like kind of drop down on the on the resolve. There's some other options here. Oh, right? interesting. So, you know, there's there's sort of like you can augment your experience with Sentry if you tell us about versions and releases, then we can do some clever things. Like you can say, hey, I'm about to hit deploy on this fix. So I'm just going to go and mark it as resolved now. Mm -hmm. And that way it will stay kind of like cleared. Mm -hmm. And then when the next version rolls up, if we, if we actually see, if we see a user come along and trigger that same bug in a subsequent version, we'll know that that was like a true regression. Right. And, and so this is important because while you're deploying the fix, people might still be actually like hammering the live error. 
Yeah, that's fair, right? And and then we want to make sure that uh, that it's actually linked to the fix and not artifacts. Yeah, okay, that that totally makes sense. Um, so, and then the other thing that I'm thinking about is like, so this one, we know that somebody was kind of messing around in the console to cause this error. So I don't actually think that's true. I think that this is a different signature because it's a different browser. Oh, is it? Okay, so that's so just I see me. Windows there. Um, it's probably, or... Uh, See, could Chrome. be Chrome versus Firefox. Maybe. Does does Chrome have an event dot this? That would be fascinating. This is a really tricky thing for us. In a perfect world, every browser or every JavaScript engine would create the same stack trace for the same bug. Mm -hmm. But this is not true. And what we try to do a lot of work to try to like normalize things down to their common elements. Um, you know, browsers change all the time. <laughs> that stack trace, you know two versions from now in a Chrome update might look different. Right. And so there are certainly some conditions whereby things are different. Okay. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. Um, so yeah, that, that, okay. So let's assume that it was something where like somebody's making, making an error on purpose, then I'd mm -hmm. be able to go in here and say, okay, we know that people try to hack our console like this. So I'm going to yep. ignore this one. And then I won't get notified about that anymore, even if it continues to happen. Yep, it'll clear from the lists. You, but you, but you can always kind of like still see that you can find it. It's it's buried intentionally. Right. You know? So I would do like I could do ignored errors. This is a good question. <laughs> it's probably like is is colon ignored. Oh uh, yeah, yes. there it is. So is. We've got some new tabs sh shipping soon with some more helpful yeah. things here. This, but this, you know, for, for me as a GitHub user, this is pretty familiar. Like this is how you filter issues and, and things like that. So once you learn the, the pattern, it's uh, it feels pretty straightforward. Um, oh, and you've got a search builder. That's also pretty cool. Like these are all handy. I'm really proud of that search builder. That's probably, that's one of the first things I built when I joined Sentry nice. in 2015 and still <laughs> hanging around, probably rewritten 10 times over. <laughs> that's that's always the 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 way um also i saw dj cheesy p mention that you have a dark mode i want that how do i get my dark mode it's a good question um, I'm, i expect dj gcp to tell us where to find it TV. so there's organization settings and there's personal settings so if you kind of go over your um shift p wow shift p I don't know. No, but if you if you hover over your sort of like um, generated user avatar there in the top left, learn with Jason. Oh, there. I have my user settings. I didn't yeah. even know that was clickable. And then, so then you can you can do theme there. Nice. And now we are the night. Okay. Uh so this beauty. Yeah, look at this thing. Okay, so so we're in here, and now we can actually handle this error. So we've we've got our error ready. We found the bug. We're gonna we're gonna fix it, and I'm gonna push, and we're gonna watch this thing rebuild. We don't really need to watch it rebuild. So instead, we're going to uh, just let it sit in the background here. Um, well, I can answer a question. So Ryan asked, "Can you group errors by line, character number to aggregate those slight variations?" So. Um, it's possible. So there's there's sort of like a, we call it a fingerprint. There is a sort of default fingerprint that is generated. Um, you can override that. There are there's server-side fingerprinting rules that you can change. You can also, at the in the client library, you can change, you can basically create your own fingerprint based on what you know about your code, um, sort of in, in JavaScript configuration. So there's a lot of capabilities that we provide. Um, and JavaScript, Browser JavaScript is probably the worst for these variations. You know, if you're say running Node and right. you are only running one version of Node in production, which ideally you are, you know, you're going to have basically complete um, uh, consistency with stack traces and grouping and so on. Same for pretty much every server platform, Python, Ruby, etc. Nice. Yeah. So I mean, this this is uh, this is pretty powerful stuff. Um, so. From here, we've got a couple options, right? We could we could try to instrument more things. Um, we could dig into some advanced workflows. Uh, we've got about thirty minutes. What what do you think <laughs> is the the right use of our remaining time here? 
I almost want to just call this a success. And I mean, if, out. you know <laughs> what, if you want to, if you want to call it a success, we can always do that. I don't necessarily think that uh, the, a longer episode is a better episode. So we can field some questions and, and call this one a, a, a high five and look how great that was that we got all this done in, in an hour. Um, but yeah, I mean, looking at this, like for real, it, I, I really do think this is a, a nice workflow where getting alerted when things go wrong, being able to see exactly where the code is, uh, is breaking and, and being able to do this in a way that's not getting alerted on Twitter. That's not me noticing it the next time that I open the site and realizing, oh my God, I can't believe that I've left this in production for a week and a half. Um, and you know, when, when we talk about this from a, a usage standpoint, so if I go to, um, how do I get to the Sentry homepage if I'm logged in? Uh, it's sentry.io slash welcome. Sentry.io slash welcome. Okay. So if I go to Sentry.io slash welcome, and we'll look at pricing here, um, it looks like I can do quite a bit on the, the free package here. I've got release tracking, support for languages. Um, it looks like maybe the reason I can't do the third-party integrations is because I'm not on a team package. So maybe it, mm -hmm. it just needs to tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, this, like, this, is, this is pretty slick because I can get the, the email notices and I can, I can get the, the regression checks. Um, so the one question that I do have when we're talking about this is like, I don't necessarily want to get emailed every time there's an error because, you know, people are messing around and maybe they try something, mm -hmm. then it's going to cause an error. How could I say like, if an error is happening more than once or more than a lot? Uh, so let's go, let's go to that alerts tab. I think that maybe that's one thing worth going over really quick. So, um, hmm. You'd expect that there's probably a default alert rule. Um, oh, so let's do, let's create an alert rule. Okay. And so we can so, choose our environment. Yeah, we have a clever alert builder. I'm now just learning that we probably just turned off alerts for new users. So I'm gonna check that out, um, <laughs> which is why that table is empty. Oh, I got it. Okay, okay. We play around with a whole bunch of things. I lose track sometimes. Hey, you got to iterate, right? That's the, that you, you ship fast and you learn and then you make adjustments. Um, mm -hmm. But so, okay, so I want to make an alert. My alert is called, it's busted. Mm -hmm. And when an event is captured and all of the following happens or any of the, okay. So that, that makes sense to me. Um, I can say, ooh, here we go. This is what I want. The issue is seen by more than like, x times in y mm -hmm. amount of time or by more than x people in okay so i want to see this if it's if it's seen by more than i don't know let's say three people in one day that's when mm -hmm. i want to get the alert and so now does this mean as soon as the third person sees it i get the alert or tomorrow i get the alert i think the third person excellent that was yeah. that's what i would hope would happen and then it will create a new issue. Uh, so that's actually a separate rule. So an issue is like a grouping. It's, oh, it's that oh like, I see. I it's see. that like whenever we find some, it basically means whenever we find something with a new fingerprint that we haven't seen before, we can contact you, right? And then if it happens a million times after that, you won't get a second email. You just get an email the first time we see a new fingerprint. So that's one capability. Um, Nice. Yeah. So this is, this is great. Um, if there are no matching issue owners determined by ownership settings, which means it would just default to me. Yes. Um, and then if I, if I add more people to my team, then I would be able to give each person a, an area of ownership. And because we'll set up those ownership filters, uh, it'll email just the people who need to know and not everyone on the team. Yeah. Let's say a drop down really quick. I just want to uh, team member. Yeah. So, so there's even concepts of teams, you know, so mm -hmm. you can, you can set up teams, you can have alert to, you know, basically like a user group, not unlike in GitHub, right? So you can have everybody in that user group get contacted. You have an individual member, um, um, on the sort of team plan. If you, yeah, you can figure Slack or Microsoft teams. This is where you would also like blast that into a channel or whatever. Got it. Um, and that rate limit is to, you know, can also stop you from, hurting yourself by creating a rule that is maybe so uh, noisy that it just goes off the rails all the time. 
Right. Cause yeah. Cause like, even if, uh, even if I did want to get alerted for every new error, I probably don't want to get more than one email every five minutes. That seems like it might hurt my feelings. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> and that gives you a chance to bail out, right? You can, you can say like, oh, okay, I'm getting way too much of this error. I need to go like chill out this alert. Um, as opposed to waking up to 15,000 emails in your inbox. Um, not that I've ever set up alerts that did that to me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) um but yeah no this is i mean i like i think this is really really cool and and what i like about this too so everything that we've done so far um is this is available on the free plan so as an individual site owner i could set this up for my own site or if i'm building a web app on my own i can i can set this up for my own web app and i can operate on Sentry. it's just when i start working with a team when i when i want more integrations that I, I go up to the next plan? Yeah, so there's, there's sort of like a volume limit, right? Gotcha. Which is, um, uh, I believe that's somewhere in there, but um, yeah, 50,000, maybe I don't know. The exact number eludes me right now, but um, you know, for, for, for people who are doing casual side projects, you can go pretty far with that sort of developer plan. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you have serious traffic or you're, you know, you're a bigger team or whatever, uh, it's 5,000, right? Um, then you know yeah and, and you know available in the other plan and what I, what I like about it is that it seems to be the kind of thing where it, it scales with the importance of the the project that you're putting up right like by the time you get to the point where you're you're doing a lot of the things that you would need in a team you probably have some kind of revenue coming in so it, it supports the idea of like I'm doing a thing for a hobby project but I really do want to make sure that this hobby project is quality then this is great. Set this up, get your, your insights and, and be aware if something is wrong. And then when you start making money, you start taking it seriously. You, you know, you, you get that, that coworker. Now you're going to be like, bump this up. Let's go like more production. And then you get bigger and then you get bigger. And it's, it's, I think that's a, I like that model where you get to start super small and, and mm-hmm. like, you're not forced to immediately jump to the $50 a month plan. You know, I use it for my pet projects uh, as well. Over the holidays, I wrote a wrote a little bot to figure out how to buy a video card in this in this uh, crazy climate, and mm-hmm. instrumented that with Sentry, and discovered all the ways that I am not a very good programmer. So, <laughs> uh, that's, yes, and and frankly, that's helpful, especially um, when you're writing an inventory scraping bot. You know, you want to know when it's not working; otherwise, mm-hmm. you will never be informed when the the thing that you want to purchase is available. You'll just go on wondering forever does this thing even work? Right. Yeah. Uh, which I did for a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Right. And I think, you know, the, the thing that's really exciting about this is, you know, we did like including messing around a little bit, including, uh, you know, exploring and me wandering off on tangents. We took us an hour to set up full instrumentation where now I'm going to get notified if something is going on with learn with Jason. And that is really exciting. Um, and now I know we can take this further. Like I imagine that I could, I could try to catch, um, you know, can I can I do things like catch 404s or uh, catch 500 errors and stuff with with Sentry as well? Yeah, I mean, that sort of like automatic instrumentation. I would I would check up like bring up the JavaScript docs. Like you can do docs at Sentry.io. I think it's worth just looking at the type of stuff that you can do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, obviously it's different platforms, but you know the experience that you followed is sort of the what is like a good level of value that we can just provide out of the box by making decent assumptions about, about, you know, what's going on on your website, but you can do other things. You can, um, uh, for example, those user accounts were based off of IP address. Mm-hmm. Okay. So just, just a guess at, you know, man, maybe an IP address is a unique user. Mm-hmm. Um, you can choose to anonymously, anonymously identify your own users by just sort of adding context. Right. So, you can choose to, if you want to, you can just actually directly identify them so that you know, hey, John Doe hit this bug. And if gotcha. that's an important, you know, hey, maybe you're, maybe, you know, if you're a company and you, maybe John Doe is an important customer to you, you can actually reach out to them proactively and let them mm-hmm. know, hey, I know that you've experienced this bug. I just want to let you know that we've already shipped a fix and you shouldn't have it again. Um, right. We used to do that a lot in Sentry's, um, um, in Sentry's early days. Mm-hmm. And that is a great experience as a, as a sort of customer of a product to, to, to learn that, you know, I didn't even have to go tell them that something was wrong. They just reached out to me, let me know that something was fixed. Yeah. So 
that's something you can do. Um, if you want to be more, more privacy conscious or depending on, you know, what, what data climate you exist in, you can just choose to like hash that email address or hash mm -hmm. a user ID so that you can at least uniquely identify users and, and bucket them correctly, but not exactly know who they are. So the numbers are good. Right. right so there's a lot right. of capabilities there. Um, you can set your own tags. You can do stuff like, um, you know, some, some tags that we use are like customer type, maybe plan type, you know, is this person on a team plan or a business plan? Is this, is this a bug that is occurring to a very specific seg, like a, a segment of users? Um, not just sort of like the default ones, like what locale they're coming from or what browser they're using, but, you know, maybe we have them in a split test group and that split test group is experiencing a bug and it's just that group. Right. And that's going to go a long way to help us identify what the cause is. Right. So there's a lot of, I guess, hints and things you can choose to go further with yeah. to, to help the system out. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, th and this is also like, I, I love the idea that, you know, by default, you're, you're providing really helpful de like the experience is good out of the box, but if I want to go in deeper, I can, mm -hmm. I can just pull in this sentry object and do more stuff, which I, mm -hmm. I think is a really, that is a really powerful model. Um, and, you know, like things like being able to identify the transactions or, or um, like atta is attachments what I think it is where I can just like straight up throw something in here and it, it shows up in Sentry? Um, yes. Yeah. Because that, I mean, I, I don't know if that's a, a practical thing to do, but it's pretty dang cool. <laughs> I'm impressed that we have this example from JavaScript. I hadn't actually seen this, uh, but it is something that we support. Um, it's more common on some platforms. Um, so, so we support like games and like mm. native platforms. So you can attach like a, a like a crash dump. For oh, example. I understand. Yeah, that makes sense. So, so another thing that I could do here is like if I was uh, it, like if I were to be fetching something and I got I got back a an error response in my like catch, I mm -hmm. could. I could string, I could like do this um, stringification of like whatever came back from the, in the catch. And so we actually even in. just, we have first class support for HTTP oh, responses as well too. So that's, that's <laughs> another thing you can do. Attachments is more just sort of like, you know, here's literally like a binary blob that is going to go, you know, is going to like, imagine it's going to go to S3 under the hood, but it's sort of like, mm. you know, uh, correlated with the event. Um, and then you can download it later. I get what um, you're saying. Yeah. You know, Again, we looked at a very sort of like front end JavaScript centric approach, but if you were wiring this up with Flask or Django or Ruby on Rails, you know, a similar kind of attitude about auto instrumentation exists. You know, was there an HTTP request? Yeah, we're gonna grab that and it will get sort of injected into that event that you saw. So the experience is different for every platform. It's kind mm -hmm. of like tuned to that platform to be, to give you like, again, decent, like really good value for that platform. Yeah. So if we swap over to, to PHP or something, um, mm -hmm. or I don't know, one of these, but uh, here, Rust, Rust tooling. Uh, <laughs> we like Rust here. Um, but this is like, this is just kind of, it's fun that this exists. Like this is a thing that you can just drop right in. Right. Um, and I think that that is such a, it's just nice, like to be able to, to say, you know what I don't want to deal with today? is setting up my own instrumentation and just being able to say like please give me a pretty dang good starting point and as i learn more about the way errors happen in my app i'll go in and further customize them so that i can mm -hmm. get better reporting better alerting better ownership and and all that stuff which is you know those are all the things that like you eventually have to do that because it's like i, I remember being at teams where you know i join as employee number five and by the time we're at 65 everybody's still getting emails every time something goes wrong and it's like okay we need to clean this up a little bit we're we're getting a lot of a lot of noise and a lot of people are just starting to ignore their email because they they get too much like email spam and they're like well email goes off all the time i don't need to look at that right like it's the the github alert issue where mm -hmm. if you get 500 alerts a day you're not going to read them so you miss important alerts so this type of of specialization that we can do here and, and set like Hey, if you get an email from Sentry, it's because you own that issue and like you are the one who needs to to deal with that, which is I think a good approach. So if I want to bring this full circle, you know, we began this conversation saying like, hey, a lot of people don't do this, right? Mm -hmm. But if people, if developers are experienced with 
a version of this, mm -hmm. particularly sort of like um, backend developers, they're familiar with logging. And so, and what, what is logging? Well, your, you know, every print statement, every stack trace, everything that would, you know, go out to the terminal when you're doing local development would go to some file, right? And there are certainly more advanced logging tools that can do alerting on stuff, so, you know, stuff that goes into a log file. But, you know, if you imagine log files as being text primarily, um, or maybe even structured objects, like they don't provide the, these levels of capabilities that we kind of touched on, right? Mm -hmm. Resolving, ignoring, fingerprinting specific events, um, this level of instrumentation for breadcrumbs or all this jazz. Um, this is sort of a very like curated approach for, well, I really want to understand errors and performance primarily. And so that's where kind of all this stuff comes from. And your comment about um, uh, the GitHub notification problem is is absolutely apt. That's why there is sort of a code owners like feature. Mm -hmm. um, it is a little different because arguably URL is another is another you know because we are talking about like a production application and not purely source code. We can look at other attributes to um, assign ownership on. URL is a good one, right? So. You know, if, if, if maybe in a, in a company I own the store, you know, store.company.com, that, well, anything under that URL can belong to me, for example. Absolutely. So, yeah. I don't know. Thank I you, Alberto, like for the point. sub. Um, no, it, it really is. <laughs> and I think that that's a, it's such a, a critical thing. Um, and so, yeah, I think like coming coming from here, this this actually does kind of feel like a good place to, to wrap up because we've shown like how far this could go, how, how customized it can be. We showed... How quick it is to get started. We looked at the UI. Um, I feel like this is this is something that I am I am definitely excited to to put into my hobby projects and and to start looking at like how can this be you know useful to me and how can this be something that saves me from a bunch of stress that I cause myself by shipping code that's not as stable as I thought it was when I when I merged it. Um, and you know I think that's that's a. It, that peace of mind, especially when you're trying to like drive a bunch of traffic to your blog or when you're you're launching a new feature for your your hobby project and you want to put it on product hunt, like the last thing you want to do is is, uh, you know, do your soft launch and nobody reports a bug. And so you go live and you immediately realize that like the most important part doesn't work for anybody on Firefox. Um, so so being able to to get those error logs early and, and get that information before it becomes an issue in the product hunt thread. I think it's uh, that's that's a really powerful thing. So, with that being said, um, Ben, are there any resources that you recommend for people who want to to dig in beyond what we did today? Uh, <laughs> I mean, not to put you on the spot. Like, I know we we so we've got docs.sentry.io, and yeah. these look pretty pretty comprehensive. Um, I, I think just sign up for it. Go uh, go through the onboarding flow. It, it tries to hold your hand um, and help you be successful and. Um, yeah, docs are here. I, I don't know that I have anything. I guess we actually do have like a resources section somewhere on our website at the bottom, you know, one of those. Um, um, like on the marketing page where resources and tutorials. So there are, there's a bunch of, yeah, sort of like. A whole bunch of stuff in here. You know, maybe you already use Sentry and you want to understand, you know, advanced mode. Um there's some cool stuff here. There's some some marketing stuff here too. Um, so those are some, maybe some other things I would I would check out. Yeah, nice, cool. So yeah, we'll we'll drop the I'll drop the resources link. You can you can go hunt around the site for for everything else. Um, and with that being said, let's do uh, let's do another shout out to Ben here. Thank you so much for coming on and and showing us all around this product. Uh, go follow Ben on Twitter and get all that uh, all that good good information. Um, also another shout out to the sponsors. We've had Jordan with us all day, putting up with my jibber jabber, uh, doing live captioning. That's from Wyco captioning. Very much appreciated. And we have, uh, that made possible by Netlify, Fauna, Auth0, and Hasura, all of whom are kicking in to make the show more accessible to more people. Chat, thank you so much for being so active today. We've got so many cheers and bits and, and gifted things and yeah, D DJ Cheesy P. Oh, 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 and... He's saying there is a uh, Discord. So let me grab a link to that as well. Here is a Discord link. So if you want to get into um, 
you want to get into the Sentry Discord, you can do that. Is is that a like a good target for people who are getting started? Have questions? Yes, thank you, Cheesy P. Very good save there. Um, <laughs> there is a Discord channel, um, and we're trying to we're trying to build that up. So people should um, say hello. That'd be helpful. Absolutely. Cool. So with that being said, um, you know, make sure you go and check out the schedule. We've got a lot of really fun stuff happening uh, coming up on the show. So later this week, we have uh, Abby coming on. Abby's going to come and teach us about state machines on Kubernetes. I honestly don't even know what that means. So I'm really excited to find out with the rest of you. <laughs> then next week, we've got uh, Ben Hong is going to come back and teach us view Hasura and serverless functions. I can't wait. Uh, and then we're going to talk to Sunil Pai about ES Build, which I think is going to be so much fun. If you haven't heard of ES Build, it's so fast. It's so fun. It's a it's a really cool kind of interesting alternative to things like Webpack. So I uh, I think that's going to be really good look into the future. Um, we've got Jennifer Wadella coming. We've got uh, people I haven't put on the site yet. We've got Wes Boss coming to join us. We're uh, we're we're talking to. It's it's so good. We're going to do a, an episode with Remotion with uh, with with Jonathan Berger. Um, that's the use react to create videos i'm pretty excited about that that's going to be really fun um but anyways chat as always thank you so much for hanging out with us ben thank you so much for taking your time today to teach us how to use sentry and and just generally be delightful uh, i very much appreciated it any parting words before we call this thing done i'm just gonna say thank you chat i'm gonna, I'm gonna jump in on that thanks jason i was only mildly embarrassed walking through our own product um it's a good sign right yeah <laughs> Awesome. All right, chat. Stay tuned. We're going to go find somebody to raid. Ben, thank you so, so much again for hanging out with us. We will see you all next time.